today we're going to get started on number four and number five. So as you can see here in number four, the only difference between it and our previous question is that in this portion here, in this you know save of i, previously we saw that in the offset space there was a number, but here as you can see there's a letter. So how do you multiply the i by four in MIPS code? Right. So if there was a number, we multiplied eight by four or seven by four, and then we added it to the base register. So if there's a letter, we're not going to add. Instead, we're going to shift. So I'm explaining why in a second. When the offset is not a number, we use the SLL command to multiply by 4. Alright, so how many bits should you shift and why should you shift? So shifting left is equal to multiplication. And shifting right in MIPS is equal to division. So this is what you basically need to know. Shifting left in MIPS is equal to multiplication and shifting right is equal to division. So if you want to multiply i by 4, you're going to have to apply this formula, 2 to the power x, and we need 4, right? So in order to get 4, we have to do 2 to the power 2. So the number of bits that we need to shift left is equal to 2. So if we wanted to, you know, uh, multiply this i by 2, for instance, so the number of bits we would need to shift left would then be 1. So in the similar way, you can calculate it for basically any multiplication number. Alright then, so now we know that we need to, in order to convert this into a memory address, we need to multiply i by 4 by shifting it left by 2 bits, and then we just normally add it to the base register. So let's get started. As you can see, this starts off with a while loop. So in MIPS, whenever you need to loop, you need three things. You need a branch instruction, a branch if equal to a, a BEQ or a BNE instruction, and you're going to be needing a jump command. All right, so as we go through this, you'll understand how. So for this while command, I've put a loop here. Yeah? And now what we're going to do is we're going to shift left our I. So. Shift left I, which is in S3, by 2 bits. And we've multiplied I by 4, and we've stored the output in the temporary register T0. Next, we're going to add the base register. Now, what we usually did uh, in our previous examples is we just directly loaded it. But here, you have to add T0 to the base register which is in uh, um, save is an S6 and then we're going to load it so in T1 I'm going to store T0 which was our multiplication result and add it to S6 okay so now I have my memory address but now I'm going to have to load it to a register so that's what we're going to need to do. So I'm done with addition. Now for loading. I'm going to load it into the register T1 again. Or oh, okay fine. I'll take another register T2. 0 and inside we're going to have T1. Two questions. Why did I put 0 here? Because we've already carried out our, you know, our multiplication and our addition, right? So I don't need to add anything else here. Before, when I put something here, for example, you know, um, 32, it meant adding 32 with the base register. But since I've already done my addition separately, I just need to load the, you know, the memory address into a register here. 
and now that that's done we can move on to our statement here so if save of i is equal to k i plus equal to 1 so if save of i which means if our t2 is not equal to s5 which is k then the loop is going to break and we're going to exit so that's what i'm going to write bne means branch if not equal to if um t2 which is our save of i is not equal to s5 then we are going to jump to exit all right so this is our exit here what the statement means is if these two are not equal to each other you're going to not jump sorry you're going to branch to this instruction here which is exit and exit is basically the end of the code but if they are equal to each other what we're going to do is add i which means uh, you know adding a register and a integer add i and uh, s3 s31 so what the statement means is i is equal to i plus 1 all right and then we're just going to jump to loop this is our complete mips code for this while statement so as you can see that mips is basically a much longer you know process of coding than what we usually use in our high level programming languages quick recap because of this while we know that it's going to be a loop so in loops what we need is the loop instruction a branch instruction and jump instruction so next what we did was save of i we converted that into a memory address first we multiplied i by 4 by shifting it left two bits and then we added it as we you know we did before in our examples to the base register which was s6 we now have our memory address but we need to load it into a register right so here is the register that we used and this is our memory address here and since we've already carry out, carried out the addition we don't need another offset here so that's zero now we have our memory address which is save of, for save of i we're going to compare save of i to k if they're not equal then the loop is just going to exit so if these two aren't equal jump to exit else if they are equal then the branch is not going to be carried out and we're just going to move to the next statement and i is equal to i plus one s3 is equal to s plus one and we did it with an add i and then you jump back to the loop all right so this was the while statement code now for our final example this has no loops the only tricky part here is that it's a little bit lengthy all right so i'm just gonna paste that here this is our question and we've already studied every single one of these techniques in the first four examples so it shouldn't be too bad all right so if a of 6 is equal to c of 6 then we're going to carry out this statement here in order to compare what we're going to need is the branch instruction but before we can do that we need to bring a of 6 and c of 6 into separate registers so let's get started on that So since the number is already given here, we don't need to carry out any shift. You can just directly load it into a register. So I'm going to choose T0. And what we have to do, quickly recap, is 6 into 4, which is our offset, 24. And our base register is A. So we're going to put that there. All right. Next, we have to load our C6. So I'm going to put that in T1. So 6 into 4 is again 24. And we are going to add it to our base address of C, which is an S2.
and then we're going to we've loaded both of our you know our memory addresses in two separate registers now we can branch them so if they are not equal what we're going to do is jump to the else statement so if a if t not register t not is not equal to register t1 we are going to branch to the else statement and our else statement is here so we'll leave that for later but if they are equal we're going to have to carry out this instruction f of 8 is equal to you know g of 8 plus blah 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 so we need a bit more loading here let's load g8 first load g8 into register t2 so 8 into 4 is 32 and g is in register s1 next we're going to load c5 so load that into t3 so we have sorry c5 so it's 20 5 into 4 is 20 and c is s2 the base register we've loaded that we're into t2 and t3 we can just carry out the addition now so g8 plus c5 add and i'm gonna put that in t3 with t2 all right beside this code i'm telling you what i've been doing so what we did here was g8 plus c5 and in this portion we loaded c5 and in this one we loaded g8 okay so we've added these two store them in t3 and now for this you know memory address here so look at it in steps before this a what we have to do is load a of 2 so load a of 2 in I'm going to be choosing t2 again you can see that the purpose of t2 has already been fulfilled so we can just store you know another variable or another memory address in the register doesn't matter anymore so in t2 i'm going to be loading a2 so 4 into 2 is 8 and our base address register of a is s0 all right and then what we have to do is a little bit complex we have a2 so we have a of um a of a2 we have this part here so what we need to do now is shifting because what we have right now is this t2 so since t2 is not a number we're going to have to shift left t2 by two bits we're going to have to multiply it by four and manually we're going to have to add it to the base register just like we did before so shift left t2 don't get confused i'm going to be shifting t2 left and we're going to store it back in the register t2 so this is basically multiplying t2 by four next what we're going to do is add it to the base register base register of a is s0 and finally we're going to load load into let's say we're going to load it into t4 fine t4 we're going to load zero of t2 okay so we have finally we have a of a of two loaded into a register so what we have to do now is just add this portion to this portion 
So here was our G8 plus C5 in T3. So add that to T3. T3 and A over 2, which is in T4. And finally, we're just going to store this entire thing in F8. So store T3 into F of 8. So 8 into 4 is 32. And at the base address of F is S3. And this is how you would have, you know, written the MIPS, written or executed this line here. F of 8 equal to G of 8 plus C of 5 plus A, A2. So we're still not done because we also have our else command. And I'm just going to... Do that code to our right. So the else command came if when we compared a of 6 and c of 6, if they weren't equal, we were going to branch to else. And the code in else is as follows. f of 9 is equal to g of 5 plus c of 3. That, that's fairly simple. The first thing you need to do is load G of 5 into a register. So I'm just going to pick, let's say, T1. So in T1, we need to load 20. And the base address of G is S1. Next, we're going to load um, T2. We're going to load C of 3 in T2. So it's 12 and C is S2. You have to add these two, and I'm just going to put that in T2. And finally, you just have to store this result in F9. So remember, in, so in the store command, the first one is the source, and the second one is the destination. So our source is T2, and our destination is 36 and S3 so one thing that we missed out here is that after checking if A of 6 is equal to C of 6 we go to this code and then we go we're going to need to put a jump statement a jump to exit so why do we need this it's because after we finished doing this portion, the code should directly, you know, exit out of the loop. It should not go to the else statement. So we're going to put our exit, you know, our exit statement here. So there we go. And that was the entire code of this question right there.